And now for our weekly news segment. Hello, Tony. Tony. Whoa. Oh, you're you're <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> hey, guys. How's it going? What's going on, man? Uh, good. I'm back in the U.S. now. So, uh, oh, wait. it's The camera is out of sync again, at least for me. Oh, um, no. It was yeah, just I, fine, I think, now because we just did. Whatever. Anyways, yeah, just continue. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Okay. Just take it away. Yeah, try, let, uh, try to get it going because then we'll jump into space. Um, yeah. so, cause, so just share cause your da- screen. I think Danny's yeah. going to hang around a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah, now it's back in sync. It just took a second. Okay. Okay. Hey, guys. Welcome to um, the weekly news section. Um, so grab some tea, some beer, whatever you want, and uh, <laughs> let's get into into it. Um, the first thing that I want to mention um, that I found interesting and cool is that Linux Mint accepts Monero as the nations. And if we open these links from um, Reddit, you can see right now, right here, that you can actually donate to Monero to Linux Mint. Um, so that's, that's really interesting. And then... Um, there's a Monero ATM project that could be completed before MoneroCon 23. Uh, that is going to be on uh, the 23rd of June, 2023. That's a lot of uh, 23s. And um, if you go on their website, they actually detail how you can build that yourself. And um, you need a single board computer, a bill acceptor, a coin acceptor, a thermal printer, QR reader module, a 7-inch HDMI display, and a power adapter. And the cost is between 200 to 400 euros, which is not a lot of money. And you can build your own um, Monero ATM. And hopefully it's gonna look as good as the one on on, on the right. That's and, sick, man. We gotta, we gotta, who, you know who's behind? We gotta have them on, on the show. Um, I think, no, I, I don't know, but I need to look into it. Um, that'll be cool, like if we can have that for Monero Topia. In Mexico, that'll, oh that'll yeah, be, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing, yeah. and you can exchange cash. You can, you know, they support many um, currencies, even coins, um, and it's written in Go. So um, that's that's cool to see. And um, of course, there's no camera like all the other ATMs, and um, yeah, it's uh, cool. Uh, then let's talk about over quick. Um, Elite Wallet, it's a multi-currency mobile wallet that supports Monero now. It's a non-custodial, uh, it has a built-in exchange for dozens of pairs. You can buy cryptocurrencies with credit, uh, debit, um, slash your bank. Or you can sell cryptocurrencies by bank transfers. And if we go on their website, um, it's essentially a privacy-oriented privacy uh, self-custody wallet. It's available for Android and iOS wallet. And, and iOS, um, and you can also donate in Monero. If you go all the way down, you can do- donate in Monero for the project. Um, so it's good to see more and more people becoming more privacy oriented and um, more keen to Monero. Um, then I want to mention MIT and um, their inclusiveness uh, report from four countries. Um, they're looking into CBDCs and they've done some research. I think a 15 month research. Yes, a 15 month research um, on India, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Mexico, and about how, uh, so essentially low and middle income countries and how, um, what inclusion issues they, they might have with um, CBDCs. And um, if you go down, if you, if you go on uh, this tweet by uh, Bilal, um, it talks about uh, the paper published by MIT Digital Currency Initiative, and they're looking into self-custody. That's a big thing. Offline cap- capabilities, um, that's also huge when it comes to making um, payment, digital payments. Um, you know, if you don't have internet, you need to be able to make payments, and then uh, there comes the trust. But if we go down on the article, um, there's a quote that I find really interesting. It says, especially considering the rise of authoritarian regimes around the world, the acceleration of the surveillance state and the increasing challenge of regulating the technology industry, it is far from self-evident that people should trust a CBDC. (laughs) Um, 
so that's up to you if you want to if you want to trust the CBDC or or not. And by the way, if you want to check out all the links, if you want to read them by yourself and look into um, you know because there's far more uh, details and you know research papers that you can see, um, the links are in the description. So you can go and um, and check it out. Then let's go into um, this one is huge. It's about uh, United Arab Emirates and their new federal virtual asset law. Um, and if you don't comply uh, with this law, there's a hefty fine of up to $2.7 million. Um, and this is, of course, in the name of um, terrorism and money laundering and to protect people from it, um, although it's, it's uh, pretty hard. And uh, they, so they passed a new law that governs virtual assets uh, setting up the country's initial regulatory regime for the cryptocurrency space at the federal level um and the crypto regulator called it's called the virtual asset regulatory authority vara and um irina heaver uh she's a, a united arab emirates based crypto and blockchain lawyer she explained that the move has several implications um and Entities that engage in crypto activities must secure a license and approval from the new regulator. Non-compliance could lead to a hefty fine uh, of uh, $2.7 million. Uh, and essentially, every crypto and web-free project operating in the um, Arab Emirates will have to structure a way to comply with the new federal law and all of the existing laws. And uh, starting January 14th, which I think it's today, yeah, uh, today actually, um, everybody gets three months to to comply with the new uh, regulations, and this is whether you are a crypto exchange, a crypto brokerage, a crypto payment service, uh, basically all the entities that deal with uh, with crypto. And again, this is in order to combat money laundering, crimes, the finance, the financing of terrorism, and the financing of unlawful organizations. Um, and then it also mentions that. Um, it's, it's still going to be hard to prevent FTX-like entities from attempting to commit fraud. And um, they want to make um, the Arab Emirates the web-free capital of the world. And then moving on, let's talk about Russia and uh, the CBDC settlement system. Uh, they've been dabbling with uh, CBDCs since uh, the restrictions because of the war with Ukraine. And they have two possible cross-border CBDC settlement models this quarter. They wanted to release a, a um, digital rubble by the beginning of 2024, I think. Uh, but now um, we're expecting it to come sooner in the first quarter of 2023. And the first proposed model sees various countries entering into separate bilateral agreements with Russia to integrate their CBDC system. Um, each agreement would be made to ensure the conversion and transfer of assets between the countries. Uh, are in accordance with the rules of the agreements. And the second, this is a more complicated model, it proposes a single hub-like platform for Russia to interact with other countries, sharing common protocols and standards to facilitate payments between the connected countries. Now for this, you you know, you, um, the country with which they are uh, conducting the payments with, they need to be technological, technologically and politically sound already in order to, um, to commit to such a thing and um what's also interesting let me see what it is over here yeah the vice president of the association of banks of russia alexei uh, voilukov said that introducing a digital rubble won't change or improve russia's global political situation and trials for the cbdc platform can only be undertaken with countries that are friendly with the russian government and and te technologically ready um, it's interesting how the government is very uh, keen to to uh, the CBDC, but the Bank of Russia isn't. And we've seen articles in the past where uh, there's been these conflicting, uh, this, this conflict between them. Um, then let's go into uh, the BIS economist that suggests improving Tradeify with CBDC to attract users away from crypto. Um, there's many risks involved with crypto, as we all know, and uh, <laughs> economists are suggesting that they need to make Tradeify better in order to sway people away from crypto and get them into, into uh, CBDC. And it says, 
uh, they want to develop an alternative. What they had in mind was the CBDC. Uh, BI senior economist Matteo Aquilina said they saw lessons from the crypto winter that descended in 2022. The recent failures in crypto asset markets underscore the need to address the risks, the risks presented by crypto before those markets become systemic. Um, they said uh, crypto is unlikely to go away on its own despite the issues with it. The offers noted uh, they place potential risk mitigation actions into categories of banning specific activities with crypto, containing crypto in isolation from the real economy, and regulating crypto in a manner akin to, to Tradify. Um, and then each option has relative pros and cons. They noted a ban, for example, could conflict with founding principles of society, among other things. The free approaches can be pursued simultaneously, however. Um, for essentially CBDC, for it to be better than crypto or to sway people away, it needs to improve the speed and the cost efficiency. Uh, it needs to be easy to use. And then I think they also mentioned uh, privacy, yes. Um, there's a quote over here in this article by the author, and it says they could help reduce the cost of payments, enhance financial inclusion, bolster the integrity of the system, and promote user control over data and privacy, which is not true because um, I'm, I think her name is Christine Lagarde, uh, the president of the European Central Bank, and uh, she detailed in her paper uh, that um, you're not going to have full um, privacy that you, you will have in Monero. Um, there's going to be some level of privacy, but not the one that, of course, we wish for. Uh, they can still uh, turn off and off, off and on the switch, the privacy switch. Yeah, they basically, can... the way they word it is like, you know, every, it'll, everybody will have privacy, except in instances where the government needs to be able to <laughs> look into things, which just implies that there really is no, no privacy. Exactly. And, and this is detail in their paper. There's a paper that uh, we talked about in the past. And even they say in that paper that you're not going to have that level of privacy that, you know, you might think of. But they still throw the word privacy in there, of course. Uh, it is interesting when you ultimately think of CBDCs versus crypto and how they're going to yeah. be competing against each other. And, you know, if CBDCs, they, they might be able to, to mimic the predictable supply right like theoretically yes. by saying you know uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna sh show you you know you'll always know how many cbdc's exist at any point in time and you know as they try to compete with bitcoin right they're gonna have to like add these features essentially but mm -hmm. the privacy they're just never gonna fully give into that because they, they mm -hmm. just can't they, as a government they're not gonna they're not gonna give that part up um, <laughs> So it's going to be interesting as they try to compete against crypto, but they'll, they'll never be able to mimic something like a Monero and say, like, here's a truly cash like thing that people can can use to transact without uh, without surveillance. Well, I think a lot of people from crypto are going to be keen in some way into CBDCs because uh, most of them, they don't really care about privacy anyway. They just care about the capital gains. Not a lot of people know about, about Monero, and that's why we are sitting at uh, the rank uh, that we are at, I think 20-something. 20, 20 Monero did go up today quite quite a bit. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are in it for the money, so I think the CBDC will, will attract um, more people, but hopefully that people will become a little bit privacy conscious and then they'll find their way into, into Monero. Things like FTX didn't really help um, the crypto movement. So it's interesting how 2023 is, is going to be for Monero. Uh, but actually, on January 12th, which is two days ago, um, it was the 14th anniversary of the first Bitcoin transaction made by Hal Finney. And he's a legendary cyberpunk who was the first to download and receive Bitcoin, helping to prove the system um, worked. Um, well, he's second to Satoshi Nakamoto, but um, um, still he's one of the first. Uh, Satoshi sent him 10 Bitcoins, uh, which in today's, um, today's uh, it's worth a lot. And um, it was just a test trans transaction to see how Bitcoin works. Unfortunately, Finney died in 2014, but he did a lot for, for the space before he died. He suffered... Um, Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a 
amyotrophic lateral scler uh, sclerosis. It's a debilitating, debilitating illness that attacks a person's nervous system. So unfortunately, um, he suffered from that and ultimately um, died. Uh, but um, when Satoshi announced the first release of the software, he grabbed it right away. He wanted to test it right away. And um, he found, he mined a few coins, he found a few bugs and let the software run for a few days before determining the protocol was stable by draining on his computer's um, CPU. Um, then he also talked about the price and that uh, each of the 21 million coins could one day be worth $10 million. And then he also said, since we're all rich with Bitcoins, or we will be once they're worth a million dollars, like everyone expects, we ought to put some of this unearned wealth to good use. Um, this is in a separate 2011 Bitcoin talk post. Uh, but what he mentioned, and um, it's really, really um, good to hear and interesting. He says, he said, the danger is if people are buying Bitcoins in the expectation that the price will go up and the resulting increased demand is what is driving the price up. That is the definition of a bubble. And as we all know, bubbles burst, of course. Um, if it's just based on price, which a lot of people are in Bitcoin for the number go up and not for the technology, well, it, it is going to burst and it's going to go up and down. But if it's an actually good technology, then it's going to be stable because people will actually want to, to use it. Um, but then he tweeted in January 12th, uh, 10th, 2009, running Bitcoin. And then a week and a half later, on January 21st, 2009, he's, he said, looking at ways to add more anonymity to Bitcoin. Now, January 21st is actually next uh, Saturday. So um, we're going to celebrate that next Saturday. We're going to have... Yeah, yeah. We'll take... We'll, we'll we're thinking we'll make that the, the theme. And of... it's also our hundredth episode. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. I, oh, wow. yeah I just realized that. Episode? Yeah. Wow. Monerotopia. Monerotopia. Yeah, episode Damn. 100. Holy shit. Yeah, oh, right? I, know, I just yeah. realized that today. How many episodes of Monero talk have we had? Holy shit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Thousands. I'm not going up to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, so it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so we're going to try to celebrate that next Saturday on the date that he sent out that tweet. And it, so that was literally his second Bitcoin-related tweet, right? His first one was, I'm running Bitcoin client. Yeah. Ten days later, he's, like, working on ways to add more anonymity. When we, we interviewed uh, Kurt, um, an arrow talk a couple days ago. He's a big BSV guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was pretty interesting. Um, but I was surprised. I asked him like out blank. I was like, I was like, so was Satoshi a cypherpunk? Was he a crypto anarchist? And he's like, no. He's like, no, I don't, I don't believe he was. So that's just oh. like that was like what? I was like, okay. Yeah. Like any, any answer he gave me, I was just, I was just more, I more, more baffled. Like, <laughs> baffled by. So I'm like, I don't really get what it is. Wow. So it's like it's like a, a boot licker, boot licking coin. Like so the purpose of of I, I don't want to get into it. Yeah. Let's but I was just very that. surprised that so they're they're you know, the claim is that Satoshi didn't even have these crypto anarchist ideals, which I just think is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I wonder <laughs> like what happened to Halfin because he tweeted that he wanted to add more anonymity to Bitcoin, but maybe nobody was interested interested besides him at the moment and maybe he gave up uh, i have no idea well there there was talk of it i mean there's that that famous post of satoshi talking yeah. about potential uh having the conversation kind of out loud about you know how anonymity could be added or privacy more privacy could be added to monero yeah by yeah. effectively adding he, he described ring signatures and stealth addresses um, yes which is pretty interesting. And so, you know, we don't know. Was Hal Satoshi, you know, was it a group of people? Was who, know, who knows? But it, you know, uh, there, there was more talk there. But yeah, with, obviously, it'd be great to talk, be able to talk to Hal, but that's, that's not possible. It's not possible. Um, but we see that literally the first guy who was using Bitcoin, right? He was the first one to receive a transaction that he saw the immediate flaw in Bitcoin, which was, was its lack of anonymity. And so, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he partook in in creating Crypto Note. Who knows, right? Like maybe he was part of that. Um, we do not know, but it's it's just indicative of the fact that he, this guy, who's really literally the first user, whether he was Satoshi or not, a part of that group, 
saw the that for for this thing to ultimately work it needs to have privacy and anonymity built into it mm -hmm. and it's it didn't take him long to discover this it took him like a week a week and a half <laughs> and then he tweeted well i think we should add some anonymity to bitcoin <laughs> amazing but it's crazy like it, uh, this plus the 100th episode maybe who knows I mean, it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought I was. Yeah, it's you know, crazy. I was like, oh, because this is episode nine to nine. Maybe Monero, so next week Monero versus BTC will hit 0 0.02 by, by next week. We'll just have a crazy Monero And rally we'll see how Sir Douglas will be feeling also next week because he's getting ankle surgery on Tuesday. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, as you guys let me know how we'll alert he will be we'll or drunk. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Knowing Doug, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna make it no matter what. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh I'll yeah. I'll power totally. it through it. Tony, man, thank he's you so much. Rolling on the side. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have one more thing before. Um, okay. This porn star tweeted that Monero is the only privacy coin, and yes. uh, she has a lot of followers. Two hundred and twenty-three thousand followers. I was actually before I actually clicked on her profile to see how many followers she has, but I'm not going to because YouTube will take this video down <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I show what uh, she has on her profile. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's cool, you know. More and more people discover uh, Monero. I'm not sure if she's into crypto at all, and she just tweeted Monero is the only privacy coin. Yeah, I, just, I tried to. searching her, you know, her Twitter. It wasn't even popping up as mentions of Bitcoin, but it could just because I just started following her or something. So it's not like loading correctly because I can't imagine she hasn't been talking about Bitcoin. She just starts talking about Monero. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let, let's uh, let's get her in the room. Guys, tweet tweet at her. <laughs> I sent the tweet out inviting her. Brenna, Brenna Sparks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to comment after as well to try to get her in. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Monero is she tweeted Monero is the only privacy coin. It's got 118 likes so far. Yeah, she has 220,000 followers. Not a lot. Um, I think uh, Don Yaka then tweeted they should add Monero to um, only coins. Mm -hmm. I mean only fans. <laughs> oh yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah, I think he tweeted that yeah. Because it's like it's the perfect use case. It's it's kind of shocking that like it hasn't been added there yet. I know, I know people are talking about like working on you know Monero based OnlyFans or something. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. you would think yeah. they would just adopt it though. It just seems like something that would really, you know, help their business, right? Yeah. Like people that want to, for the customers too, right? Like they don't they don't why would they want to use their their credit card or some trick? You know? Why wouldn't they opt to use Monero for purposes like that? Right. Yeah, I mean, good to see. Good to see it growing. Monero <laughs> growing. When people need digital cash. They they mention Monero. All right, man. It sounds like you're uh, getting your lawn cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They decided to come right now. It's all good. It's all good. So, all right. um, thank you, okay. Tony, for the news. Really Tony, thank you guys. Thank we'll you so much, man. Week. We're gonna we're all gonna right. jump in the chat. Jump in the chat. Yeah, we're yep. gonna jump in spaces. Bye, guys. So. All, all right. right. Bye, bye. Bye.